How's it going everybody? Dato Doi here with another Dragon Ball Fighters video and this one is actually super exciting because for the first time since around late November when we got our hands on the latest patch, I'm actually going to be taking a look at a few tier lists put out by pro players uh, and then kind of making my own along the way as well as talking about what makes these characters strong and weak at the current moment as well as just a lot of strategies that are currently popping up and making these characters super good. Now of course when it comes to tier list videos there are a few disclaimers that you always gotta give out. Number one being tier lists are meant to be fun and they're a great way to get the community talking about the characters they enjoy, the characters they think are really strong or weak, and how they think these characters could be fixed. So make sure if you have any thoughts on your personal tier list, or if anything I say you disagree with, please let me know down in the comments or agree with it, whatever you want to do. Uh, just, you know, let me know what you think of these characters. And the other disclaimer is that even though we will be looking at top players tier list when we're talking about this video, I am by no means a top player myself. So when I talk about their list, I will make sure to try and look at what they specifically said about characters they listed and where we can't find information like that, I will tend to stay away from making any assumptions about why they put that character there, and instead will just make my case for why I think that specific character is strong or weak. And with all that out of the way, now we can finally jump into the actual meat of this video. So, the two tier lists we'll be looking at today come from us from Korean Wrestling Man, who is a very good 18 player, uh, and Nokami, who you may remember from his amazing Goku Black comeback, and is also just a very good player at this game in general. So we won't have these two tier lists up for that long, but I just wanted to give two examples Examples to compare and contrast two people who have wildly different experiences playing this game uh, and see some of the similarities between the two. So let's start by taking a look at the low tier. Now as you can see, two characters that really stick out are Krillin and Android 17. Android 17 didn't even make it on the tier list at the end of the day in no Kami's version, only getting a small little mention in the text box. But why is that? Why are these two characters considered low tier by practically almost everybody that plays this game? Well at the end of the day it comes down to their bad normals and all around bad assists. Let's talk about Android 17 first because I personally view him as Krillin but a lot a lot worse. So Android 17 has no beam, he can't control the neutral, and one way they really wanted you to get around was through your Rekkas, but the Rekkas don't create true block strings, it's very easy to punish Android 17 for almost anything he tries to do, and on top of all of that Android 17 just gets eaten alive by Super Dash. If you try to jump to a wall you'll get hit by a Super Dash, if you throw out a couple bad buttons in neutral you'll get hit by a Super Dash and into a combo. Uh, at Android 17 just has a really hard time playing the game at all. Now I've talked about it in the past but I think a way they could help Android 17 with these issues uh, is just making him less rigid, give him more options to cancel out of stuff faster, be a bit more sporadic so that it wouldn't be so easy for the opponent to just shut him down. Uh, and maybe give the guy a few block strings as well, uh, all of that would help but at the end of the day bad normals, bad neutral, and Dragon Ball Fighters, those are going to be real issues for you. Taking a look at Krillin, he actually has a really great beam, which is why I feel he's better than Android 17, but still suffers from the lack of good assist. Having Sensu Beans has really turned out to not be the greatest thing in the game. At the end of the day, if you really want to get back blue health, why not just switch out your characters or use an early game sparking uh, and just play three very good characters that all bring great assist to the team. Instead of having to make adjustments and run Krillin instead, uh, his rocks just don't do enough for him back there and his Sensu Bean certainly does not do enough to make up for it. That being said, when comparing him to Android 17, Krillin has a lot more potential in his combo games, and his beam is just that good. Of course, it still has its problems with the recovery, but still very much an improvement over 17. And this seems like a good time to switch purely back to No Kami's tier list, because he had an entire stream going through each and every character while putting them on his tier list, giving his thoughts and opinions while listening to the chat. If you want to check that out, all the links to do so will be down in the description. He also said he was going to put it on YouTube, uh, but I checked his channel, it didn't seem to be up quite yet, but if he does add that, that link will be down there as well. Now, because he did talk about every character at such length, there's really no point for me to do the same thing because he's already done it and better. So let's try to keep this video nice and short but also generalizing the information. So when it comes to low tier, like Krillin and Android 17, you're going to find that these characters have a hard time doing anything grimy when it comes to blocking. Their assist might also not be up to par, and generally they don't have block strings that can hang with top tier characters. And again, I use the word grimy because you really want to be able to get some sneaky hits in when it comes to being top tier at fighters. Either that or your control of neutral has to be really disgusting. And I would say this applies to everybody under that middle line, except for maybe Goku Black, who Nokami placed down there specifically citing that if you're playing against somebody that knows how to block, you should never really get a hit in with Goku Black. Obviously that's detrimental, and in my opinion, on my personal tier list, Goku Black is also down here, but more so for the reason, why play him when you can just play Goku? The two characters are very similar, except in my opinion again, 
Super Saiyan Goku is just better in almost every way. Of course, both of their assists are still right around the same level, they're both very good, both beam assists control the space, but Goku also has a lot better DHC synergy with almost everybody else in the cast, as well as a more versatile beam, better block strings, better combos. Almost, I, I, I really don't see a reason to be playing Goku Black over Super Saiyan Goku, except for maybe if you just want to run both of them and have two beam assists. But yeah, Goku Black is in a very weird spot nowadays. And as we move up the tier list, this is probably where you're going to start seeing characters that you recognize from a lot of online matches or a lot of tournament play, and that's for very good reason. Around this area, this is when stuff kind of gets real. Every character here has a little something that they bring to the table uh, that, that can catch you off guard in one way or another. So for example, in Nokami's list, this is where you start to see characters like TN, Cell, Base Vegeta, Trunks, Beerus, Broly. While these characters might not be at the top, they are very scary in their own right. Trunks, for example, he listed Moke as an example of a great Trunks gets in there with Change the Future, takes up a lot of space, uh, and really holds down neutral and beats a lot of characters just outright. He also mentioned how base Vegeta has a lot of good things in neutral, such as his knee, acting as almost like a pseudo pre-patch uh, Bardock Rebellion Spear. So yeah, characters in this portion of the tier list are generally very good and actually have some really disgusting stuff uh, if you go looking for it. This portion of the tier list is also coincidentally where you'll find some of the best assistant fighters. Yamcha, of course, is somebody that barely needs an introduction at this point. Kazunoko has shown that this assist is really, really deadly. Super Dash plus Yamcha assist is time proven. Uh, just uh, just holding him down. Uh, Super Saiyan Goku, again, we talked about him with Goku Black. Beam assist, DHC, all of it. Super Saiyan Vegeta also here, also still making a name for himself uh, with his great neutral and his great anchor abilities. And his assist is still super, super good. And now we've reached the most exciting part of any tier list, that being the top, top tier. And before we get into any character specifically, I do feel the need to mention the direction that the current fighters meta is going in, in case anybody watching this video isn't currently aware, a super popular strategy is to just keep snapping your opponent back out because it leaves them super defenseless. All they can do is block, they can't guard cancel, they can't call in any assist, they can't tag out, they just have to sit there and either block or get opened up right away, which isn't preferred because then you'll just get snapped back out. Let's take a look at this clip from Korean Wrestling Man playing some Android 18 on Twitch. You will see that even though he can kill or get sliding knockdown, he just chooses to keep doing the same rotation over and over again because it's forcing his opponent to just have to block it and obviously you don't want to block against 18 so he keeps getting opened up and snapped out you can see here he can even kill this character if he wants to but what's the rush why not just snap him out to get a little blue life and kill the next guy uh super disgusting strategy and this is something that top tiers nowadays really relish in if you're top tier in fighters you're playing this single player game and you're playing it well so yes, characters that have an easier time doing that are going to be a bit higher up on the tier list. Android 18 is a character that I think is very high tier because of this. Of course, bad support still, you're going to see him on the left side, but you can't underestimate just how good that is. Uh, this isn't the case for every character, obviously, we still have some old classics. Android 16, Bardock, Adult Gohan. These are characters that are top tier because they have great buttons, great normals, great combos. Uh, pretty much everything you want in a top tier still to this day. Great level 3s, Android 16 not so much, but he's still up there. One character that you might be surprised to see up here is Hit, and Hit is actually making a huge comeback in Fighters, uh, because Sonic Fox picked him back up again, and um, Nokami actually specifically said that Hit is crazy because his 5M is basically just Lariat, and I agree, I was I was watching through some newer Sonic Fox matches on YouTube just to see uh, why he's going back to Hit, and it's actually kind of insane. I don't remember this move being that great, but he's converting off of combos that no other character rightfully should have any reason to. In neutral, he's just throwing it out and getting random hits on his opponent. Uh, and it's disgusting, really. Hit is looking super good. Uh, he still suffers from not having that fast of a low, but he has a command grab, so it's not like he doesn't have any mix-ups. Uh, so yes, Hit is a character that, surprisingly, very high tier nowadays. But let's go ahead, cut the chit-chat. We get it. Hit's cool, whatever. Bardock is whatever. Who's the best character in the game? Uh, and to me, and on no comics tier list as well, it's gotta be Piccolo. This character is insane. He's always had great normals, but now everybody else nerfed around him. I uh, He's just so good, man. Uh, his hell zone in the corner, the snapback, the mix-ups, the, the fuzzy, it's, it's so stupid. His hell zone grenade in the corner is just actually super stupid. He'll snap an opponent out, use hell zone, mix them up, 
snap them out again, use Hellzone, or he can just keep attacking them if he wants to. All while, again, I'm repeating myself, all while having a great set of buttons and normals he can throw out at any time, and a reality stone-like move he can throw out in neutral, uh, this is a character that you really don't want to sleep on, uh, and certainly I don't think anybody's sleeping on him anymore, but if you still are, you better set your alarm. Piccolo is here to stay for at least a little while. Gotenks is also a great follow-up. Ghost Oki is still very, very stupid stuff. For those that don't know, he just backdashes out of the corner, sets up Ghost, you're pretty much forced to block, and then you just basically rinse and repeat until your characters are dead. Piccolo and Gotenks are both characters that if they hit you in the corner, you're probably not going to be playing the game or at least anything resembling the game you thought you knew for at least a little while. So yes, that's pretty much the tier list for Nokami. A lot of other top players commented on the Twitter feed uh, with little disagreements, but for the most part, it seems like everybody kind of agreed with the overall theme of this. I definitely am one of the people that think this tier list is super reasonable uh, with my own little changes that I'd like to make. So this is what my tier list would probably look like. Again, you can you can see the plagiarism on the walls with this one. Uh, but, but again, I just thought his tier list was super good. We got Android 17 down here on the bottom left corner for me. Uh, I tied... Krillin and Vegeta Blue, with uh, base Goku being a little worse on support than Kami listed him. And other major differences include just Blue Goku being a little higher up. I think he might actually have a case for maybe being a little better than base Vegeta, but I wasn't too sure on it. Trunks I also moved over to the right, Ginyu as well. Hit, I moved up. I basically scrunched everything down uh, and just moved around characters where I thought uh, I disagreed with him a little bit. But overall, it's pretty much the same list, so <laughs> kind of stupid, but there's not much to talk about with my own tier list. But I think that pretty much concludes this tier list video. Again, make sure to go check out Korean Wrestling Man on Twitch, as well as No Kami on Twitch. I linked the specific VOD where he goes over every character in detail, so you can make sure to check that out as well. If you want an in-depth analysis on why each character like Majin Buu is up there, or even why somebody like like Cell has kind of fallen off. You can also check out his Twitter, which I will link below as well. And again, make sure to go down in the comments and let me know what your personal tier list would look like. If you follow me on Twitter, you can even at me with it over there with a screenshot or something. While you're down in the comments, also make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these types of videos so that you never miss out on a new one. I also have some videos of me actually playing this game up on your screen right now that you can feel free to check out if you're interested. Other than that though, I'm Datsadoya. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.